Each one is over a thousand feet long. Weighs almost a hundred thousand tons. That's a serious elevator. And costs three and a half billion dollars. We caught one. <laughs> For 40 years, Nimitz-class aircraft carriers have delivered U.S. military might all over the globe. But now, these legendary ships are being phased out to be replaced by new carriers. Before they're decommissioned, I'm going aboard a flagship vessel. I never want to sleep under a flight deck again. So I can uncover the engineering innovations that allowed this ship to launch land and relaunch more planes more quickly than ever before. Now that was some serious engineering. And see what made the Nimitz class super carriers. One thing to launch an aircraft off of a carrier, but it's just as important to make sure it lands back safely in just three seconds. To do that, we use some wire rope, hydraulics, and some pretty neat engineering. In the early days, engineers used a cable connected to sandbags on pulleys to slow the plane and stop it, most of the time. The setup is basically the same today. Four two-inch wires run across the landing deck. They're called the resting cables and are designed to snag the plane's tail hook and bring it to a hard stop in just two seconds. But to stop a modern 30-ton jet, you need a lot more than sandbags. Engineers that designed the Nimitz came up with a solution. Like the catapult shuttle, the cables are just a visible part of a much larger system. It all happens just under the flight deck in the arresting gear room. So one of the things I noticed is the flight deck, they get all the glory up there, right? I mean, Ooh. the plane's coming in, tail hook could grab the arresting wire and smoke everywhere. For me as an engineer, this is, this is the, the heart of how it really happens. Yes, you know, it is. I mean, th this is amazing down here. The engine operator is always monitoring to ensure that the proper temperatures, pressures, and the actual machinery is working properly. Wow. There's wow. a lot of work that's involved down below decks, um, yeah. and it's very important that we do that job the right way. You never know what's gonna happen, and pilots have to come home Yeah, soon, so. yeah. At its heart of the arresting system is another giant accumulator. Unlike on the elevator, it's not designed for speed. Instead, this accumulator is engineered to slow down a plane by creating resistance. The huge cylinder is filled with 300 gallons of hydraulic fluid and connected to a giant piston. Let me show you. You can see under here is the piston. Most pistons might be half an inch, one inch, maybe a two inch piston on heavy machinery. This piston is 18 inches in diameter. When the plane's tail hook grabs the cable on the deck, it drives the piston forward, forcing all the hydraulic fluid through a small hole inside the cylinder. That hole is only half an inch wide. The backup of fluid creates enormous resistance, enough to absorb 47 million foot-pounds of torque and stop a plane. It works a little bit like this. Imagine this syringe system is your engine and your accumulator. As a tail hook grabs a cable on the flight deck, it's gonna go through a series of pulleys and begin to push that hydraulic fluid through the piston into the accumulator. When it does that, it's going through a control valve, or in this case, a nozzle. This creates all the resistance you need to stop a plane from 150 miles an hour to zero in just a few seconds. And amazingly enough, this engineering feat is able to recycle itself and do the exact same process in 90 seconds, catching plane after plane after plane. It sounds simple in principle. In practice, it's a precise, high-speed, high-risk operation. For the trainee pilots, there are three critical stages as they prepare to land. On their first approach, the pilot will bring the F-18 toward the flight deck, but will then do a pass over the carrier. This is to help them get a visual of what it's like to approach a carrier at sea. 
Uh, the first time I saw the carrier from the air, everyone says it looks small in a big ocean, and, and they're right. I saw it and was like, oh, I have to land on that tiny little rectangle. On the second approach, the pilot hits the deck at 150 miles per hour, but doesn't attempt to engage the tail hook. Instead, the aircraft goes to full throttle on touching the deck and takes off again. This maneuver is called a touch and go. It trains pilots to abort a landing and quickly relaunch if they miss all four arresting cables. After the touch and go, it's time for the trainee pilot to earn their stripes by tackling a landing. Landing an aircraft on an aircraft carrier is one of the most difficult things to do in aviation. The first time you see it from the air, it just looks like a little boat down there. And then you descend and you get down close to it and it's massive and it's intimidating to know you're about to go land on this thing. 